Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Stephanie. This is the week for January the 19th through the 25th weekly wrap up. So it's the fourth week of 2020. Yay. Where? I mean, we're already in the fourth week. We're already a month in. A month in to a new decade. Gotta love it. Uh, got my nails done. As you guys can see, the color scheme didn't turn out as I had hoped it would. This is what the hot and colds look like. Um, I wanted it to be a little more um, not neutral. I mean, because they all look the same red uh, as of right now. But even when they get cold, it's only this one and this one that get dark and then this these three these three end up being something completely different it's weird it's weird I wanted it to be like super different like the last couple of sets of nails that I had or color change that I had but can't win them all can't win them all um this week was okay for reading um, I can't believe I'm almost out of January already and I have not put up my Bookish Academy Awards. They are coming. I'm so sorry for the delay. Things just started to like get in the way. Book slumps and everything like that. And yeah, so I read eight books last week and let's just get to them so this video isn't like super, super long. Yay! Okay, so the first book that I finished last week was Baiting Him, How to Catch a Alpha number two by Aurora Rose Reynolds. I place this in contemporary. I give it 4.25 stars. I give it three steam fans. I read this as an arc from NetGalley and this is a secret stalker thief very sort of light er book um in contemporary I guess you could say for my normal taste um even from the last book from the very first book from in this series uh it's a little lighter it's very much lighter so christy is th is playing hard to get when she decides to go to a bachelorette party at gaston's um bar one of his restaurants and he sees her coming out of the men's bathroom and is like <laughs> i'm gonna check her yeah, why is she in my bathroom? And then they end up starting a relationship and stuff like that. There was a little bit of suspense towards the end of the book that was okay. It didn't necessarily mean, you know, have to be needed or anything like that, but it was good. It was good. It didn't take away from it. It didn't throw me out of the story. It was like, okay, cool. The next book that I finished was Unforgiven, which is Loveless number two by Jay Cronover. I place this in Contemporary. Um, I give it 4.25 stars. I give it three steam fans. I read this as an arc. It comes out at the end of this month, I think. I'll put the release date in here. Um, this is a second chance love story. Also sort of a love triangle in um, a, a different sort of way. You sort of have to read it. I'm not going to tell you how, how the love triangle goes um, to understand it. So you have Cody and Hill. Cody is the sister in the Lawson is it Lawson I think it's Lawson anyways she is Case's sister from Justified which is book number one so this is her story she's the wild child she does what she wants but they are dealing with a tragedy that ended up happening and I really didn't feel that the mystery that the suspense that goes along with this story was necessarily needed I liked the story between Cody and Hill more than I did the mystery and suspense that went along in their parts of the story um and it sort of leaves off on a next book cliffhanger so Cody and Hill do get there happily ever after however there is a bit of a cliffhanger with some other secondary characters for the next book which I am really really looking forward to because it has a um sort of feel of um or inspirational feel that it comes from like a Sons of Anarchy thing and I love Sons of Anarchy so <laughs> I'm looking forward to that next book. That character is very, very, very interesting. So I'm looking forward to that. 
the next book that I finished reading was Lund Long Mine. And I probably said that all wrong. Here's the cover. Uh, this is Holiday Hunks number three by Sarah Spade. By yes, Sarah Spade. Um, places in contemporary novella. I give it four stars. I give it four Steam fans. I read this as an ebook. Um, I am a little um, um, on the fence about this one because in the story it sounds like this is an interracial relationship. However, if you saw that cover, it looks like two white people. But that's not how it's described in the book. So I don't know what's going on with that. Not sure exactly. But I did enjoy the story. Tristan and Lindy end up at the same masquerade ball. And because they have masks on, they share a kiss. And this is Tristan's story trying to figure out who this mystery woman is and once he does it's him trying to convince Lindy to continue on with their relationship so it was fun it was sweet it's a good mix into her holiday hunks series I am looking forward to the next book which is a Valentine's Day story and I hope to read that with my book boo Brie before Valentine's Day next month the next book that I finished was Boss Man Bridegroom by Megan Quinn and I placed this in rom-com. I give this book five stars. I give it four Steam fans. I read it as an arc. It released last week. You guys need to go read this. I laughed out loud so much through this book. So this book follows Wrath who if you read some of the other books uh, for Megan Quinn, um, then you know who Wrath is. And this is his story, finally. He is this sort of uptight kind of guy, and he has some funny moments. He ends up wanting to hook up with this woman named Charlie, and it's just so much fun. It's workplace. He needs an assistant. He hires Charlie to be his assistant. So it is a workplace uh, romance. However, there is no other employees that sort of see their romance. And I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. So if you're look, if you're not into that whole power dynamic thing, it, you just need to read the book to understand that it's not one of those sort of miss represented power dynamics and he's using his place because it's totally not that it's so not that it's so funny it is so funny um but they meet at a sort of um a paper convention or like an assistant planner type convention and when they run into each other he's a real douche about taking a picture for her and then she ends up you know standing up for herself showing that sass right off the bat and I was just here for this story. I loved every single moment of this book. Loved it. The next book that I finished was Thick by Alexa Riley. I placed this in erotic novella and yes this is a reread for me. I give this one when I listen to it I give it 4.25 stars. I did downgrade the Steam fans. It was a five when I read it as an ebook. Now I'm rating it as a four. I think that they got the really they really got good narrators for this audiobook um, to have it read to bring out the sweetness and the fun of this story so that it wasn't completely based on their sexual connection. This is a story that was on Read Me Romance. I forgot to say that. Read Me Romance. Read Read Me Romance for all of those that love when I read when I sing that. Um, so Teeny and Bull. Teeny is a tiny little person. Uh, woman, not person, woman, and Bull is a mountain of a man. So it it's playing on that stereotype of huge guy, small woman, and they, Alexa Riley plotted this story on the podcast, which is why I read it as an ebook before all their ebooks were taken away, um, and I got it then. So I was already on board. I knew all the backstory and everything like that. And I just really enjoyed it even more this time with the narration. Because like I said, it brought out the sweetness of the story. And I was here for it. The next book that I finished was Ax 
Accidental Arrangement by Steffi Walls. This is her Valentine's Day contemporary novella. I give it 4.25 stars. I give it two Steam fans. I read this as an arc. I believe it's either releasing soon or has been released already or this week, something like that. Release date there. Um, and this is sort of a workplace romance, but not really, because you have Annalise, who is a bomb-ass executive assistant for these four CEOs, and every single year for like the last five years, she has been planning their lives to make sure that their wives and their daughters get amazing gifts around the holidays. So this revolves around the Valentine's Day holiday. She is doing her job of making sure that they get flowers, make sure they get jewelry, make sure that they get chocolates, make sure that reservations are made and everything like that. And then one of the CEOs decides to throw a wrench in her plan and she ends up having a Groundhog's Day sort of day and things just aren't going the way that she needs them to go. The flower shop that she usually uses has a different person working there and that in turn in walks Gavin. He ends up helping her with the flower arrangements and they end up having an attraction toward each other. It was so much fun. It was super sweet. I really enjoyed this little slice of, you know, Valentine's Day fun and sweetness. So I definitely think you guys should go check it out. If you're just looking for some love. Yes. The next book that I finished was Bastard Bachelor Society by Sarah Nye. I placed this in New Adult. I give it three stars. I give it two Steam fans. I read this as an arc and for me it just did not work. It it was lacking. It just didn't the funniness that was supposed to be there just wasn't all that funny. Um, I didn't like either one of our main characters, but then again, I didn't get to know either one of our main characters. So we have Abbott and Brooks. Abbott is a daughter or child of um, wealth and prestige. Her family is well known in New York, and she ends up living across the hall in the same apartment building as Brooks. Brooks from what I gathered, had a hard time when he was growing up, and now he got his heart broken, so him and his friends started this, like, boys club where they weren't dating anybody, and they had a bet and stuff like that, which didn't make any sense to me because the bet came, like, right at the beginning of the book, and it was like, there was no setup on why they would even have this bet, but during the bet he ends up meeting Abbott and because they live across the street or across the hall from each other, they start to interact and they become friends, I guess you could say, but at the same time have an attraction towards you. It was really weird. It was just really weird for me. Just, and it didn't work. I did enjoy the secondary characters of Nan and the cat Des, Desdemona, I think it was. Um, but I was still a little weird about that one because I'm pretty sure... They think, Abbott and Brooks thinks that Des is a female cat, but I'm pretty sure at one point it's, the cat itself says that it's a male cat. And I'm like, how, how does that happen? But whatever. And then the final book that I read last week was The Rose, The Red Number 2 by Tiffany Reese. I placed this in erotic fantasy. This one happens to deal with mythology. I give it 4.25 stars. I give it four Steam fans. I listen to it as an audiobook. And as I said, this book deals with mythology way more than um, the last one did. The Red dealt with historical fiction or historical moments um, through art. And this one deals with mythology. So Leah, the daughter of one of the characters in The Red, She's all grown up, and for her graduation gift, her father ends up giving her a rose Kelix. So the rose Kelix is a sort of chalice or cup um, that deals with Aries, or not Eros, 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 yes, Eros. And if you drink from it, then you can get magically transported to things, and that's exactly what happens. August is a 
is part of Eros, the cult, what have you, and he ends up coming to Leah's graduation party to try and purchase the chalice from her or the Keelix from her. And the two of them end up going on a journey. It's beautiful. There is some blackmail and mystery that goes along with it as well. This one ended up being a lot sweeter and tamer than the red did when it came to the sort of um, sexual moments uh, that I can see. Because in the red, I was like, whoo, that, whoo, whoo. That was hot. That was like super hot and different. This one was like, it's it was sweeter. It was just sweeter. It was still hot, but it was just a sweeter hot. So on to what I am currently reading. I am currently reading All I Asked by Corinne Michaels. I want to send a thank you out to Forever Publishing for uh, accessing this or granting my wish as a art gallery or as an arc over on NetGalley, bleh, get that out. Um, so I get to read this one. This is a second chance romance. I have started it and I'm getting a feel for what's going on in it. So I can't really talk about it any more than that. This book comes out in March of 2020. Um, I don't have any other books on my slate and that's pretty much all. Let me know down in the comments if you have read any of these books, if you're going to go read these books, what you thought about these books down there. Let's discuss them. Ah, yes. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Also, there's a feedback form down there. All my socials are down there. Um, whew. Storefront, Amazon, storefront, down in the description box. Affiliate links, all of that description box. Make sure you're checking the description box. The Bookish Academy Awards will not be a live show. It will be a premiere show so that I can give you guys the best quality of video with inserts and reminders and everything like that. So be on the lookout for that one. It's either going to come up on Thursday of this week or it will be up February the 1st. So Make sure you're sticking around and looking out for that one. I will do a premiere for it, as I said, so that we can chat about it as it is going. Um, so I think that's it. Thank you for watching, and we will see you guys later.